PM. Okay, I'll add it. Okay. Tell Nirmalya. Yeah, tell Nirmalya. Hmm? He will also see. I my hope is the remaining classes. I'll do representation theory of here he uh, no of uh, SUN. Okay, up to SUN, SON, I will do. Okay, enough to be able to do calculations. Okay? Then we will decide later because the semester might be over. But the thing that you might, you will be, if you do quantum field theory, it will be extremely useful is Poincare group. And if you want to go into the higher reaches of half algebras also, but we will decide it as we, depending on the interest and so on, we will decide. Okay. <clears throat> so, what I did last time was, okay, uh, let me see. I was trying to do Casimir's, right? I was doing Casimir invariance for Lie algebras. Okay. okay. And what we found was if the Lie algebra you have nothing is AC layer. Uh, total power cut. Power cut. Ah. L is simple. Okay. The Carta killing form. GIG, which is trace of add, I think I called it LI, add LG, is non degenerate. Okay. This we proved. Li being a basis for L. Hmm. So it can be also semi simple. If it is semi simple, it is simply blocks. So it is not uh, a new result. Okay. So this is a uh, really a basic result. So from here, this implies G inverse. Okay, this matrix exists. The inverse matrix exists, right? So from here, you could construct this quadratic Asimov operator. Let me call it C2, which is uh, G inverse IG times LILJ. Hmm? So, this is commuting with all the elements of the Lie algebra. So, it becomes a multiple of the identity in any irreducible representation. Okay? So, it can be used to label the irreducible representation. What about higher Casimirs? Okay. For example, you can write a kth order Casimir as the following. This is a generalization of this trick here. So, what you do is you take add of trace of 
add li prime add say uh, let's write i1 prime i2 prime add li k prime okay then you multiply it by g inverse i1 prime i1 g inverse i k prime i k okay times this is a bracket times l i 1 l i k okay this is commuting with all the elements of the Lie algebra for the same reason that this is commuting with all elements of the Lie algebra because when I con when I do a conjugation with an element of the group it rotates this but g inverse you can transfer it to the rotation to the i prime indices so it will go here but that will be a conjugation in the two ends so trace will take take care of the uh, trace will remove it okay so these are the higher casimis okay which you can write down but not all of them are independent that is it will terminate we will see how it goes not all are invariant are independent I will come back to which of them will be invariant how many invariant customers there are okay invariant means fixing two of them should not fix all the remaining ones you know the third one should not be an algebraic function of the previous ones okay so there are theorems on who is some somebody is coming okay okay Huh? These are the uh, independent. In, independent means the following: if you have a relation like, suppose you have C1 up to CL, and suppose all the higher ones, okay, are are, so there is some function of this which will identically vanish, identically. Okay. Whereas, so you must have in all representations. So it will vanish in all representations. So that means that the value of this operator in some any representation can be computed from the values there. So it is not an independent label, okay? Right? So the vanishing of this such a existence of such a relationship, such a between the casimirs, means that some other uh, things you are putting in are redundant. They can be determined by the remaining ones. So they are not algebraically independent. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, so in this connection, since I have said this. Let me spend a minute on the rank of Lie algebra. Again, an important concept. Okay. The rank is okay. the notation normally people use is let H. Contain L be the maximal abelian subalgebra. I'll give you immediately examples. Okay. It is called It is a Cartan subalgebra. It is the so-called Cartan subalgebra. Hmm? It is a basic theorem that it is unique. Uh, 
up to conjugations by the group let me call it G generated by L. by exponentiation okay there is h going to g h g inverse g is in g so g you are given the lie algebra so by exponentiating and protecting i get a group okay this is your universal covering group that will act on H by conjugation by because you can expand this in multiple commutators and use Lie algebra relations. So, this will map H to another H which will have the similar properties. This uncertainty is always there, but modulo this H is unique. Okay. This H here H is the analog. of the max what is the complete computing set of Dirac in, in quantum mechanics okay, you have the for the state labeling or the, when you make observations you have a the concept of the maximal number of operators you can see okay. it is called the complete commuting set it is a, the exact analog of that here okay. the group H generates the group okay, it is called T in G generated by H Okay. is abelian hmm. because a, uh, and is called then G is compact. T is called the maximal torus okay it is a name okay it is a it is abelian is some u1 cross u1 otherwise you get some r's real lines okay this again is a result to in J Hamilton Jacobi theory if you know Hamilton Jacobi you have studied yeah, if you go to the what they call Lagrangians you know the phrase Lagrangian submanifold you know it okay and, uh, there you get yes that is where the where the PDQ DPDQ vanishes. Lagrangian submanifold is the DPDQ. If you put it on that surface, vanishes. Okay. There, the uh, that topology of that object okay, is, is completely controlled by this kind of top, by vector fields, which are just abelian. They commute with each other, okay. and is called the and though, so that is the exact analog of what happens here. Okay. If you quantize this, if you are in the context of quantum theory, this will of the group G, you will find this as the as the Lagrangian submanifold appropriately understood. Okay. This plays a very important role
in non abelian monopole theory. Please check about this, I am still thinking. Please check with uh, um, Ramalia. If he is not coming, then I am thinking that maybe you should you can even shift it in the morning okay, if it is convenient. So it is it's okay with me in the after. Then we can meet somewhere, we two, and we have to tell Rajavardhan. Okay. Huh? No. We should inform him. But um, I am free in the morning, 11 o'clock afterwards, I have no problem, okay. 11 to 12 can be, you know, or yet 11 to 12 is good, okay. So check with him, okay. Yeah, huh? uh, then probably uh, which room is vacant, you have to look in the, uh, that may be, uh, everybody? The rooms like 117 will be free. 117, yeah. where is that? The yeah. Is vacant, so we can meet in 117. Huh? In a free and the so you check, okay. check yeah find out and say, let me know but if there is a problem we can keep it here so just let me know we have only three four classes so I would prefer not to miss classes okay. so I feel I have done a rounded job okay okay, okay. this is very important for example in the non abelian monopole theory it has played a very B, these are the BPS states. In the string people, Bogolyubov, Prasad, Sommerfeld states. So this thing comes in a heavy way. It's all kinds of mathematics comes here. Uh, Sorry. They are direct mono, uh, transition functions. Okay, this uh, let me finish this. This is, uh, mm, yeah. You see, the direct monopole is on a sphere. The transition function is valued in u one. Okay, is a closed curve. I mean, we have seen. Well, if you know the transition theory of transition functions, is a u one bundle which is related. Here the transition function between two pages is valued in a non-abelian group. Okay. So it is a different uh, uh, different situation okay. and that causes all kinds of new features. Okay. So what is it called? Uh, Langlands, some strange thing is in mathematics, Langlands duality or GNS, Godard, Noitz or GNO duality. All these things get connected. Okay. Langlands thing is very complicated, I do not understand. Okay. It is something part of a Langlands program which I do not understand. But the, this paper is very readable, GNO, Godard, Noitz, Olive and they discuss how this happens okay. and it is very beautiful. But anyway, let us keep going. Let me give you examples. Okay. So the rank, okay. the rank of L is equal to dimension of H, dimension of the Karthas algebra. And it is a theorem, not easy to prove, Raka, number of independent Kazimis is equal to rank. Of L. Okay. 
this is not a I have not seen well I think I have seen it but it is so long ago he Raka gave some lectures in Rome I do not know somewhere okay, where he described the proof okay. this is so long ago I do not know how he did it but probably we can reconstruct what we need but I have not thought about it recently okay. but it is a fact so let me look at issue 2 example rank is well h is span of minus i sigma 3 over 2 this I mean that you take all complex multiples of this so rank is or could be any other thing any conjugation so rank is 1 So there is only one quadratic, only one Casimir. C two, which you wrote, no? We will work it out. If you, it is simply minus. Okay. Well, the way I wrote, it is simply L i squared. Okay. If uh, in basis. I come to that in a minute. In basis, where G i j is delta i j, the Casimir is so, for example, it could be the square of the sigmas. Okay. Sigma over 2, so you will get 3 fourths and so forth. No? So, this is L real plus 1. So, this thing C2 is what we would call normally say J squared, but J is angular momentum, hmm? this is another notation. Okay. If you take SU3, here remember the basis okay. b alpha beta b rho sigma I wrote this no is delta alpha sigma b rho beta minus delta beta rho b alpha sigma these are the commutation relations where the b's are the tensor generators and b lambda lambda was 0 right. So, the, the h is span by ok. So, it is simply span of let us write c of b 1 1 b 2 2 because when I take the commutators I get delta 1 2 which is 0 ok. So, it is just two dimensional. So, rank is 2, B 3 3 is fixed by B 1 1 and B 2 2 by this equation. So, the Casimir's there are two Casimir's one is C 2 which is B rho sigma B sigma rho the second one is C 3 which is say B rho sigma B sigma tau B tau rho hmm. the rest are dependent on the previous ones but if you try C 4 can be expressed in terms of C 2 C 3, but 
but the way you reduce is not trivial and this is first explicitly shown by Okubo okay, that I know. Okay. Theorems are all right if you do calculations you would like to know how to manipulate things okay. and he was the first one to do this okay, that I know. Okay. okay. Yeah. The existence of higher Casimir is like Sorry? Do higher Casimir operators always exist? You have uh, for semi Casimir operators exist only for simple semi simple algebras. Yeah. Hmm. But once you have that, do you have a whole But yeah you, you can write them down but they won't be independent. Yeah. Yeah. You can simply take square of one, okay. okay. Uh, this thing for example this thing here, fourth one it will become some expression involving squares of B's in various combinations, C2 in some various combinations, okay. Some all kinds of combinations come which I am not remembering, okay. This formula was very important when Okubo proved the so called Gelman Okubo formula for the elementary at the at the octet of elementary particles, okay. Which was then, which was then quickly experimentally verified. Okay. It led to the discovery of the omega minus, which was the first hint that the, not first hint, which was over strong confirmation of the then emergent model of quark uh, of elementary particles, okay, of quarks and so forth. It was emerging, okay. and this was the first very clear affirmation that what people were guessing is in fact correct. So and that formula played a very important historical role okay. So yeah okay now by the way I want to also to give okay. try again these problems with this I stop 43, 45, 46. Now, I want to prove okay, one more useful thing before I summarize representation theory of issue 2 okay. and what I want to prove is the following. Should I to prove if the Lie group G is compact. There exists a basis where okay, there exists a basis where okay, this object here, the, let me call that basis um, L hat i of L of the Lie where okay, this object here G i j which is trace of add L hat i times add L hat j. I am changing the basis is equal to some constant uh, yeah constant times delta ij hmm? a very useful thing indeed so how do i prove this well it goes uh, yeah indeed can do better okay. in any uh, IRR gamma of L this of the trace of gamma L hat i gamma L hat j okay, 
is equal to k gamma time delta ij. Okay. So this there is an orthonormal basis. What it shows is that if g is compact, that is u2 is u3 and so on, the Lie algebra admits an orthonormal basis. It is really like a flat Lie algebra behaves like a flat Euclidean space. Now, how do I prove this? Well, Yes. The small yes, the tangent space. Yeah. Hmm. So but the, but the, for example, there is no. If a, the Lie algebra, the G is not compact. Okay. For example, SL two C or SL two R, the tangent space, the Lie algebra, is simple. So it has a non-degenerate metric, but the metric will not be. It will have signature. It will have certain number of plus and set number of minus signs. Okay. The invariant metric that we are finding this object will be pseudo Hermitian that is what is it called it will be Lorentzian with some signatures okay. for the Euclidean groups for the for the compact case it is in fact delta 1. So this is a very striking result and it has been used okay. why am I so in this basis This object C K I J okay, is totally anti symmetric. Let me call it C hat K I J, where L hat i, L hat j is C hat k i j, L hat k. Okay. So in this particular basis, this C hat looks like a Lebesgue symbol on the group, on the tangent space. Okay. And this result is very important. In discussions of of anomalies, within quotes, in quantum field theory, when people initially found L, anomaly means classical groups can become Im, something can go wrong when you go into quantum theory it may because they may become non implementable in quantum theory well okay the basic reason that happens okay this is a field where this anomaly field is where operator theory inevitably gets mixed up with symmetric considerations of a classical type what happens is that you probably have heard or maybe heard murmur or rumor that things like Hamiltonian which is 1 over 2 m times minus Laplace c squared it is an object like this okay, okay, is a, supposed to be an operator on some Hilbert space for example L2 of R3 right this operator but this operator is not defined in all of this Hilbert space cannot be the, uh, obviously because there are twice differential here whereas the Hilbert space consists of all possible functions okay, uh, which are only requirement is that they are square integrable okay. so there are all kinds of discontinuous functions they are in fact equal as classes of 
Lebesgue square integrable functions. Okay. So this operator is not defined in all of it, but only on a subset of this, which is called the domain of this operator. Okay. Only in that domain does this operator make sense, okay. and that has to be carefully specified in many cases. What happens is for a classical symmetry is can happen is that the classical symmetry acting on the domain of the Hamiltonian may take you out of this domain. Okay. When it does that, when it happens that the operator is not compatible with time evolution exactly. So you find that, that you what you thought was a conserved charge is not conserved. This happens for axial anomaly in quantum um, ax, so called axial anomaly which is standard in QCD okay. and then people found that similar anomalies were plaguing weak interactions. When people were trying to set up weak interaction theory they came across many groups which they wanted to gauge and they were having this problem. Okay. They did not put it in this language but when they did calculations something was going wrong. Okay. So people wanted to know what are the anomaly free groups because only they are candidates for describing elementary particles as gauge series and in that context this result played an important role in classification of anomaly free groups. Okay. And you will see old papers where this uh, discussion is carefully carried out. Okay. So, so how do I prove this? Well, the proof is okay, the following. Okay. Let uh, let let me call it D S okay, be the matrix. in the adjoint representation okay. in basis L i okay. in some basis. to some basis okay. Okay. and there, uh, I am assuming that the G is compact. Okay. So this is uh, we assume G or rather G0 is compact. The kinetic component of G is compact that is all that is relevant in this case. Okay. Then we know, so th this is ds is a representation. So what I got is ds in the adjoint representation add li ds inverse is add lg times ds j i. This is a matrix for the adjoint action of the group element acting on the Lie algebra, and I choose some basis. Okay. Now clearly, DS is real. As L is real. L is a real Lie algebra. Now we know from general theory that there exists a basis where ds is unitary okay. that is we know that in basis let me write the basis as l hat i okay. and that is equal to let me get the factors right. integration on G0 d mu of s c 
script ds dagger script ds to the minus half okay j i l l j so this is a new basis yeah l hat i where this is a basis c lecture c finite group c finite group lectures not finite c old lectures where i wrote this integral as sum okay where the matrix ds becomes orthogonal or do you, let's say unitary what do you mean by that i mean that if i take ds l hat i ds inverse is l hat j now the matrix will change you know d hat of j i of s hmm? and this is unitary because i any i showed that you can always make a similarity transformation for a compact case for everything become finite case which is also the compact case where everything becomes unitary but this d hat is still real is still real okay as this matrix okay this object here let me put it like this one as one is real because this is real so it is real and unitary so it is real and orthogonal right i mean it is real and unitary so it is orthogonal so d hat s okay, is orthogonal and real yeah. okay so is this object exponential t okay uh, since the let's write it d hat okay of um, what do it d hat of an element like li okay no t okay t where this thing here is uh, so what i am trying to do is in this basis this is real orthogonal so i am looking for the corresponding lie algebra elements let me get the notation right is l hat i i think let me write like this not let me write it correctly so is add l hat i in this basis okay that is i look at add l hat i where this is defined by acting on l hat j okay this is l hat k okay then i write dk let me write d hat dk high l hat i l hat j you see this is of add l hat i this j okay i am looking at i got this this is matrix in a particular basis of the lie algebra elements i compute the corresponding lie algebra element okay in, the, in that element of this particular basis in this own basis so i take the element of this basis special basis and see what is matrix is this is matrix 
and I am what I am telling you is with this definition this is real orthogonal so this is so this matrix here d hat of add l hat i I do not need to add here the result is confusing me yeah yeah I do not need to add here d hat of l hat i is what real anti symmetric let me check again okay I got this matrix this is an element of the group yeah. this is a real orthogonal now this is a matrix so it depends on the basis but now therefore I look at the particular basis which led to this expression serving as a basis for the action of the joint representation I take the elements of that basis which is this okay. and how is this defined it is defined by this equation here so this matrix I am getting out for this particular basis in the abstract Lie algebra this is a joint representation of this one okay. if you want is the matrix so I do not write add here this is real anti symmetric because this is real orthogonal so what does it mean but right hand side is equal to l hat i l hat j right which by definition let me call it c hat k i j l hat k by definition but this this is now I am telling k is anti symmetric in by this equation in kj these two indices that is what this is so so it is by this equation but it is already in ij also clearly also in ij okay so it is totally anti symmetric okay the existence of this totally anti symmetric this structure constants is necessary and sufficient for the Lie group to be compact. Okay. Now, now let me look at now let me look at the following thing trace of gamma of L hat i gamma of L hat j. So I look at this form here. I mean, L hat is a special basis, and I write it down. And I'm I want to understand what happens with this. Okay. Now I take the element of the group. Okay. Let me call it. Uh, yeah, right. What I call DFS. Gamma L hat I DFS inverse DFS gamma L hat J DFS inverse is in some representation, okay. Gamma is some representation, this exponential representation, and this equation is true, but then this one conjugating it will be the matrix of D hat in this special basis, so it will be what? j i of s okay 
d hat of uh, j i uh, this I should write here j k i I should write here l j script of s times trace of gamma of k gamma of l where here this is group element but is actually by conjugation so I look at the matrix of d in this basis that is by definition this okay. but this is real orthogonal so this is this by as d hat of of s real orthogonal what do I say I find that this this object here some index yeah this object here okay this matrix gamma i gamma j okay, as a matrix commutes with d hat of s yeah, I have not made any mistakes you know. yes because this is this matrix let me look at the index it is symmetric so you get uh, I am looking at the index yeah Yeah, sure. This one is inverse, so this is the same as this matrix D hat inverse this matrix D hat. So you can pull this uh, D hat I k. This is D hat I k. You can flip the index and put the inverse. Okay, this is real orthogonal. Okay, so you can take that join and which is the inverse. Okay, so it will begin D hat inverse this matrix D hat is the same thing. So you get this. What does it mean? If the gamma is irreducible. If gamma is irreducible, it says trace of gamma of L hat i, gamma of L hat j is k of gamma delta i j. We are sure. So by shoes, so there is a special basis with which we can diagonalize the cartan gilding form with eigenvalues only all equal. In fact, we can actually evaluate this. Okay. We can find what is k gamma. I'll, that will be my last k gamma. What do I do? Set i equal to j sum. Then, as g inverse ij is proportional to delta ij, this object here, gamma l hat i, gamma l hat i, is quadratic Asimir up to normalization. Yes, so because otherwise I would have put a g inverse, but g is one. Okay, so so this is equal to some quadratic Asimov in the representation gamma times unit matrix. So I put it here. This this trace is happening in the. This is a trace in the representation gamma. So, if gamma is dimension of gamma, there is no i here, 
the traces in the representation gamma, the left hand side C2 gamma from here, trace of 1 is gamma is equal to the right hand side is K gamma times and summing over i and j, so it is the dimension of the Lie group okay, times uh, dimension of L or we know what is K gamma. This is quadratic Casimir in the representation gamma, gamma divided by dimension of the Lie algebra or the Lie group whatever. So, the normalization is fixed ok. So, you can check this equation ok, check it in simple case I will leave it to you check for SU2. So, what you are finding is it is very elegant result very that there is a special basis which lets you diagonalize the Cartagena Lie form for compact Lie groups ok. And uh, this is uh, not just a formal result because in the existence of this, this basis means that the structure constants can be made totally anti-symmetric and this fact that they become totally anti-symmetric plays a very important role in quantum field theory because basically this total anti-symmetry means that if you symmetrize say for both particles I mean there are diagrams where the C occurs okay, and you have two photons coming out but the photons are bosons. So, if you symmetrize them this kind of contribution will go to 0 okay, and that is how the anomalies get cancelled ok, anomalies disappear ok. So, it actually has a, a significant role in the context of quantum field theory ok. So, uh, next tomorrow I will do this review just one thing I will show you why the SU2 representations for angular moment and j are irreducible because you have already done the representation theory. Then I will directly go into discussion of how to find representations of GLN, GL, GLN, SUN and so on ok which will be my last set of uh, representation theory talks for comp for semi simple groups then I will depending on time we will do Poincare. I think I will stop here and let me know what happens send me an email but make sure I mean let there be no confusion and let Rajavardhan also know copy him also ok.